Hi, it's Katrina. My friend David is going to be helping me out with the voiceover today, so everyone give him a warm welcome. Number 10. Saint Peter Out of the twelve main disciples of Jesus, Apostle Peter was, if not the most important, the most influential. Along with James and John, Peter was one of the closest companions of Jesus. And after Jesus was killed and resurrected, Peter was the one who would go on to form the Catholic Church and become the first pope in the world. In the Bible, Peter is frequently referred to as the gatekeeper of heaven. This title stuck for 2,000 years, all the way into modern pop culture. When you see a man sitting at a desk outside the pearly gates on TV, that's St. Peter himself still acting as the gatekeeper of heaven. Legend has it he's the one who decides who gets in and who takes a one-way trip to hell. But before Peter was given his holy station, he was a simple fisherman. He and his brother Andrew, also one of Jesus' twelve disciples, were out fishing on their boat when Jesus met them. Jesus said to the brothers, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And from that moment on, Peter and Andrew were two of Jesus' most devout followers. However, the story of how Peter meets Jesus changes depending on which book you read. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus boards their boat and then performs a miracle that fills it with so many fish the boat nearly sinks. And in the Gospel of John, Andrew was already a disciple of John the Baptist and knew of Jesus even before Peter. The Gospel of John tells us it was Andrew who brought Peter to Jesus. Number 9. Apostle Paul just like the Apostle Peter, Apostle Paul was a hugely influential leader in early Christianity. He spread the gospel during the first century AD, primarily through the Roman Empire. He drifted away from the Jewish people and from the Holy Land and tried to convert the Romans to Christianity. It was with Paul's great effort that Christianity really got a foothold in Rome. He started over a dozen churches, he wrote at least 13 books of the Bible, which is more than anyone else, and he originally hated Christians. This is one of the main things people don't know about the Apostle Paul. He was born in Tarsus as a privileged Roman citizen. He also grew up as a Pharisee, someone of extreme Jewish heritage. He despised Christians and was even there when Stephen was stoned to death for preaching the gospel. In the Bible, it tells us Paul helped to imprison and persecute Christians and that he only turned his life around after he encountered Jesus. Once he met the Son of God, he changed his ways and devoted himself to spreading the word of the gospel. In his later days, Paul established churches in Europe and Asia and was notorious for spreading Christianity into some of the darkest corners of the world. These were places where people had never even heard the name of Jesus Christ. Number 8. James the Great and the Other James James was one of the twelve apostles and so too was another man named James. In biblical times, people didn't have family names. They only had a first name and could be referred to in any confusing situation by adding the first name of their father. For example, one of Jesus' disciples was James, son of Alphaeus, also called James the Less. The other was James the Great, also referred to as James, son of Zebedee. James, son of Alphaeus, was one of the less popular disciples. Other than the fact he's listed as a disciple, we know pretty much nothing about him. Some believe he and Matthew were brothers, although that's never been confirmed. There are also rumors that Alphaeus, James's father, was also called Clopas and was Mary's husband. And finally, the only other bit of information we have about James the Less is that he may have taken the gospel to Persia, only to be brutally killed there and turned into a martyr. James the Great, on the other hand, we have a significant amount of information on. He was the first of Jesus' disciples to die the death of a martyr. He was within Christ's inner circle, discussed in all four of the Gospels. He was also originally a fisherman, like many of Jesus' disciples, and lived in the town of Capernaum on the Sea of Galilee with his brother John, also a disciple. It was on that very sea that Jesus first called to him in his fishing boat and urged James to witness his miracles. In 44 AD, James the Great was killed by King Herod Agrippa of Judea. He was stabbed to death by a sword in response to his preaching. Number 7. The Apostle John John was the third apostle inside Jesus' inner circle. It was John, James, and Peter who were invited three times to witness events no one else ever saw. They witnessed Jairus' daughter rising from the dead, the transfiguration, 
and the horrible agony Jesus suffered in the Garden of Gethsemane. Just like his brother James the Great, John met Jesus when he was a fisherman on the Sea of Galilee. He was likely the youngest of the apostles, but grew to be an extremely important man. As one of the fathers of the church, John went by many names. He was called John the Evangelist, John of Patmos, John the Elder, and even just Beloved Disciple. John is believed to be the author of the Gospel of John, all three Johannine epistles, and the terrifying book of Revelation. But there's one thing you absolutely need to know about John and his brother James. Their mother was Salome, the sister of Mary. Seeing as Mary was Jesus' own mother, that would technically make John and James Jesus' cousins. Have you ever read the Bible? Tell me yes or no, and why in the comments below. And hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Number 6. Andrew the Apostle Andrew the Apostle was Peter's brother. He was also the first apostle Jesus called upon and was the first person to celebrate Jesus as the Messiah. And although he clearly had a very important role as an early follower of Jesus, he's only mentioned a few times in the Bible. In the New Testament, Andrew's name only comes up a dozen times. Four of those times, his name is only there because all twelve of the apostles are listed. Just like his brother and like so many of the other disciples, Andrew was a fisherman. He encounters Jesus on the shore of the Sea of Galilee and is later the first to be called upon, but after that he fades into obscurity. He is also missing from an important passage in the Gospel of John. After the resurrection, Peter and many of the other disciples go on a fishing trip, but Andrew is nowhere to be seen. He simply vanishes and nobody knows where he goes. But by far Andrew's most famous story is in the Gospel of John. And this is one of the biggest issues with trying to be historically accurate with anything biblical. All the other Gospels have Andrew being a fisherman, but in the Gospel of John, he's a disciple of John the Baptist. After John tells the world that Jesus is the Lamb of God and will take away the sins of the world, Jesus called upon Andrew to be his first disciple and to help spread the word. Number 5. Apostle Philip there's not a lot we know about the Apostle Philip. Throughout the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and John, we have virtually no details about who Philip was. It's only in the Gospel of John, where Jesus is described as going to Galilee, reaching out to Philip himself, and urging Philip to follow him and learn his teachings. Like Peter and Andrew, Philip came from Bethsaida. However, he was never explicitly mentioned as being a fisherman. We don't know what his profession was when Jesus came to him. He spent about three years living with Jesus and the other disciples, witnessing miracles and hearing the teachings of the Messiah. The most famous story involving Philip is from the Gospel of John. In the moments before Jesus feeds the crowd of over 5,000 people with a miracle of five loaves of bread and two fish, he turns to Philip. Jesus asks him where they will get bread for so many people to eat. Philip responded by saying it would take over half a year's wages to purchase enough bread that each man could have a bite. Philip failed that test since he looked at the situation too practically. He didn't have faith that Jesus could perform such great miracles by feeding the masses. Number 4. Judas and Judas There were two men named Judas in the Bible, one that betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver and Judas Thaddeus, also known as Jude. Judas Thaddeus was one of the least talked about disciples in the Bible. He's only mentioned a few times in the New Testament, and nobody's even sure of his family's history. Some translations describe Jude as being the brother of James, while other translations say he could be James's son. It's all extremely ambiguous, especially when we get to the part where Judas Thaddeus could be Jesus' biological brother. A man said in the Gospel of Matthew to go by the name Jude. Some believe he's the author of the Epistle of Jude, which would make him the Messiah's brother. Confused yet? The far more famous Judas is Judas Iscariot, the betrayer. He's believed to have come from the city of Keriot in southern Judah. That would make him the only one of Jesus' disciples to come from Judea, as the rest were all from around Galilee. Judas is also never mentioned as being called upon by Jesus. We have no idea how Jesus and Judas met, as he just kind of appears later on in the story and is mentioned as one of the most trusted disciples. In the end, Judas was seduced by a bag of silver, but it was hardly his first time using Jesus for his personal gain. 
He is described in the Gospel of John as being a thief. Judas supposedly stole money from the disciples and kept it for himself. After he got sour with Jesus, Judas went in search of someone who would pay him money for his betrayal. It wasn't even a crime of opportunity, as Judas went out with every intent of betraying Jesus. Number 3. Saint Thomas the Apostle Thomas the Apostle began life as a Jewish person, but after Jesus called upon him to witness his miracles and to hear his teachings, Thomas quickly became one of his most devout followers. It was Thomas at the Last Supper who was told that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, but by far his most famous role in the Bible is being the one who verifies the resurrection. This was important because Thomas was seen as one of the shrewdest followers of Christ. He did follow Jesus and he did have faith in him, but his faith was greatly shaken after Jesus died. Thomas did not believe that Jesus would rise on Easter Sunday. Even after the other apostles told him they had seen Jesus rise from the dead, Thomas called them liars. It wasn't until Christ's second apparition that Thomas finally yielded and accepted that Christ had been reborn. Following the disbandment of the apostles, Thomas went on to become a saint. He carried the word of God farther than most of the other apostles, wandering all the way to India. To this day, there are worshippers in India who call themselves the Christians of St. Thomas, supposedly descendants from the first converts. Number 2. Bartholomew Bartholomew was one of the twelve disciples, one of the men who witnessed the ministry and life of Jesus Christ, and yet we have almost no information about who he was. Bartholomew was probably the least important disciple of them all. The Bible doesn't say where he met Jesus, he doesn't participate in any important deeds, and there's no record of where he went after the death and resurrection of Jesus. But just because Bartholomew doesn't have a prominent place in the Bible doesn't mean he's totally without his tales. He does appear in the Apocrypha, forbidden books of the Bible. In the Acts of Philip, Bartholomew is crucified upside down alongside the Apostle Philip. It's only with Philip's preaching that Bartholomew is freed. And while this is a fairly short story, it does suggest that after the disciples were told to go and spread the word of God to all nations, he and Philip teamed up. Number 1. Simon the Zealot Just like Bartholomew, we know next to nothing about Simon the Zealot, the other extremely obscure disciple. His moniker Zealot is also quite cryptic and scholars don't know exactly what it means. Some historians say he may have belonged to a Jewish sect called the Zealots. This was a group determined to inspire a revolution and recruit a figurehead to help overthrow Rome. This would make sense as to why Simon became a disciple of Jesus, as he was hoping the Messiah would help usher in the total destruction of the Roman Empire, thereby liberating the Jewish people. On the other hand, Simon the Zealot may have just been zealous for Jesus and God. There's just no real way of knowing where Simon got the nickname. Just like Bartholomew, Simon the Zealot doesn't play an important or profound role in the Bible. He doesn't do anything, nobody talks about him, He's merely listed as a disciple. It wasn't until centuries later, around the year 400, that his name started turning up in historical documents. Moses of Chorone wrote that Simon the Zealot had been martyred as he tried to spread the gospel into the kingdom of Iberia. Another account says he was killed by the Persians in 65 AD. The Ethiopian Christians believe he was crucified in Samaria. And most brutal of all, there's one story that says Simon was sawed in half for his preaching. Which of the twelve disciples do you think has the greatest backstory? Let me know in the comments, and thanks a lot for watching. Remember to hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon for more amazing videos from the channel.